Today's guest of the talk show is Jon Gnar, but before I introduce him, I'm going to tell a bit of the context that brought me here. Uh, in Brazil, along with huge corruption scandals, we have politicians that are still fighting for right or left. Military police is killing people every day. The media is a monopoly doing propaganda for the rich ones. Our nature is about to be completely destroyed by big corporations. And the artists are not bold enough to criticize because they are afraid to lose financing. So to be honest and not quite optimistic, I was almost about to give up fighting for some change. But the work of Jon has inspired me a lot. For those who don't know, Jon is an Icelandic comedian who became the mayor of the capital city Reykjavik and is told by many people to have been the best mayor in the world. So, <laughs> with that opening, I welcome you here to Thank the you. talk show. The first thing I want to ask you is what's more difficult, to make a living out of art or to make a living being a politician? Art. Art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, unbelievably hard. And also when you were working in a, in a country with only 350,000 people and you you come up with a joke and you can only use it like two or three times and if it's any good and everybody has heard it so you have to you know you have to be uh, very productive but uh, I think uh, uh, a job like a politician you can uh, manage to be mediocre politician and you know people will consider you to be you know good if you you know just you know just for showing up sober and so on, uh, on meet at meetings but but i think it's more difficult to be a successful artist okay <laughs> i think it's more demand you know. i read in your book one thing that i really liked you said we can't leave schools to teachers, science for scientists, and democracy to politicians. Mm -hmm. So who do you think should be in politics today? I think everybody should be in politics. And I think we have uh, 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 a real chance of changing politics on the municipality level, city politics. And uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe not parliament, because parliament can get so complicated and uh, and biased in a way and you can you can uh, if you are rich you can buy power in parliament but it's more difficult in in city politics because it's it's usually more uh, professional so uh, what we uh, desperately need more in politics is is uh, young women and preferably uh, educated young women in politics, and uh, and I, uh, in 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 my experience, they have uh, very valuable things to contribute to democracy and new ways of problem solving, and uh, and usually in in politics, it's 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 usually a bit too macho, macho. It doesn't need to be that macho, but at the same time, when I meet. You know, I'm meeting uh, uh, young, educated women. I also find it hard to encourage them to go into politics because it's, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's it can be quite hostile towards uh, women and especially young women. So, you know, if, if, if it was up to me, I would put more women, more artists and more scientists into politics, especially into municipality or city politics. Which was your biggest accomplishment as a mayor? For me, it was kind of like, you know, surviving on Mars or or <laughs> something in space. You know, just that I was, you know, the fact that I was, uh, I was uh, able to survive there for, uh, or we were able to survive there for four years, uh, is a is a great achievement. And my personal favorites. Uh, I was able to make Reykjavik uh, uh, a so-called icon city. Uh, we welcome a persecuted uh, writer. We sheltered this writer for four years. 
And I was um, uh, enormously proud of that. The Palestinian poet uh, Masen Maruf, who, uh, who was born and raised in Lebanon, because there are some things that we can offer that are, are in many, uh, many parts of the world uh, very scarce and very rare. It's mm-hmm. uh, like, uh, like personal security, for example. I was very curious of what's the biggest difficulty of police here in Reykjavik? The police? Yeah, what's the biggest problem they have to solve? Uh, you know, the police in Iceland, they have never carried sidearms. <laughs> and uh, now that's about to change. And they're going to uh, start arming the police. Well, I would, I would say uh, that the main problem of uh, the police here is probably <laughs> financial. Uh, <laughs> And uh, there isn't that much uh, police violence or corruption. But I mean, uh, what is police for in Iceland? Probably to uh, be visible and watch traffic. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's very nice for us that come from Brazil. (laughs) This would be a dream world. (laughs) You have police watching traffic. (laughs) Yeah. If you drive strangely, they might stop you and check if you're drunk. (laughs) Or okay. so the police is 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 quite quite relaxed here. I would say, yeah. What's your biggest disappointment as a mayor? I wanted. I had this dream of making Reykjavik uh, a military-free city, like a military-free zone, and there is no such thing as a military-free city, uh, and. Iceland has no military, but we are, Iceland is a member of NATO. And I, I really tried, you know, I, I made the, the Reykjavik airport military-free zone. I banned all military traffic on the Reykjavik airport. But, you know, when I, when I left office, they, they changed it back. <laughs> and, uh, and I also had this idea of uh, uh, diverting uh, uh, warships, NATO ships, from the Reykjavik harbor and to some other harbor. You know, it was something that, you know, was important to me and I really uh, tried, but uh, I wasn't successful in that. You're speaking about military free zones. What do you think should be the response to terrorism nowadays? In my experience, it's usually uh, uh, the only thing to do is to move forward. In any difficult situation, if you, um, it's uh, well, it's it's not even an option for me. I have to, you know, go on. So, so I would think uh, the response to terrorism should be, you know, uh, to open up instead of closing in. The object of terror is to scare you, to barricade your doors and buy a gun and mistrust. And suspect, and I would, you know, uh, I don't know, don't give in to fear. But I have never been the victim of terrorism. So I mean, maybe you know, maybe if I and the people I love, you know, were were victims of terrorism, maybe I would think completely differently. You know, mm. uh, but when I was the mayor. Uh, There was a a lot of talk, especially with Parliament, about security issues. I tried to keep, you know, my day-to-day life like like it's always been when I was a mayor. You know, I would go to the supermarket and I would go downtown to the the bookstore and and I would walk about, you know, and of course people would come up to me and like, uh, like complain about things and so on. But I was never, I never felt, you know, afraid or threatened. I guess empathy is probably uh, uh, the best response to terrorism. How would you define the best way you think for us to organize as a society? Is it democracy? Is it anarchy? Uh, which is your dream way? Of a society, cooperation, uh, mutual cooperation between uh, 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 different groups of people. 
through uh, uh, communication and especially conversation. I like to say I'm an anarchist. Uh, and uh, not because I think anarchism is the perfect political ideology, because more because there is no such thing as a perfect political ideology. Like there is no typical role model human. I mean, we're all different and we have our qualities and, and our downsides. And, but uh, I, 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 I feel that nowadays what we lack mostly is more professionalism. I think that in the future uh, there will be no no countries really or, and no borders. It will be more about cities. People within the cities and people outside the cities. You've played both the Joker and the King. Mm -hmm. what, should, what do you think is the biggest difference between those two roles? <laughs> uh, uh, the King is a uh, it looks more difficult, but isn't. <laughs> <laughs> the Joker is much, much more uh, difficult and also usually much more valuable. Sometimes I'm asked, you know, do you miss, you know, being the mayor? And I know, <laughs> no, yeah. no. But when I was the mayor, I I constantly missed being a comedian. Uh -huh. <laughs> I miss because comedy for me is like comedy for me is like it's like cocaine heroin something. I mean it's 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 a drug and when I'm in comedy I lose track of time. I it's just euphoria and a good feeling and the problem with kings is that they tend to take themselves too seriously. Yeah. They think they're real and they think their power is real, but it's not. It's just a game. And But the Joker knows this. <laughs> so he is aware that it's, it's worthless and it's, it's not real. And, and that's also a power. And that's my philosophical conclusion that life is a joke and it's uh, whether you like it or not it's a joke it's just a question of time now i mean now it's okay to make you know hitler jokes people actually you know laugh about hitler jokes and because hitler isn't scary anymore it's a joke <laughs> it's just the time uh, you were speaking about the the feeling you have when you're acting, it's like a drug. Yes. And I also read that in the campaign, you wanted a drug-free parliament. Yes. Uh, what would be the ideal drug policy to you? Everybody uh, who enters parliament has to be sober. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you cannot drive, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, you cannot drive your car under the influence, but you can have a, 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 a driver drive you to parliament <laughs> where you enter intoxicated and make decisions for the whole country. That's, that's insane. But sometimes when you hear politicians speak or, or you read about something they said, you suspect they were under the influence. <laughs> I have asked the mayor of Rio to do this anti-drug test yes. that the athletes do for the Olympics and he refused it. So, but I mean, outside from the parliament, uh, do you think drugs should be legalized? Uh, yeah, I think so, on special terms. Uh, well, it, uh, it depends a lot on how you define the word drugs. Drugs is a word like God, in a way. <laughs> so, I mean, you can define beer as a drug. And I think technically it is a drug, but this is, uh, it depends, I would say. <laughs> yeah. The internet is said by many to be a free space, yes. but it's also concentrated within a few big corporations, such as Google and Facebook. 
Yeah. So what's your idea of a free alternative media that you could recommend to people who are watching us? Facts. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> you should go back to facts then. <laughs> yeah, invent uh, uh, face facts. <laughs> <laughs> face facts. No, I mean it's uh, uh, the internet is highly overrated. Uh, it's a it's a good place for uh, uh, porn and information. For example, when I was when I was uh, uh, when I was the mayor, I was uh, being monitored, <laughs> and uh, I realized I I, I discovered the activity on my on my Gmail and. And I had my a friend of mine who is a, like a n uh, tech nerd uh, look into it, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, you're being monitored and by more than one." <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, so uh, and and I was asking, you know, what what options do you have? What can I do? And he said, nothing. They're always a step ahead of you, whatever you do. But you know, except for fucks. <laughs> Nobody internet. I mean, it's, 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 it's a uh, what you would consider to be a hyper object. The internet, and you can you can make some tweaks in there, but but you know you are being watched <laughs> and yeah. you are being followed, and you are being directed into a direction, even if you don't you know notice it or you're not aware of it, and it's. It's something that you know. I have, I have accepted it. You know, and it's just you know, that's the world that we live in. I've been fascinated by the internet from when I heard about heard about the internet. I think it's like the time that you know we have been enjoying the internet is what's going to be referred to in the future as the honeymoon of the internet. <laughs> One of the final questions is, uh, do you have any heroes? I have some heroes. Bruce Lee is, 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 <laughs> my, is one of my uh, childhood uh, heroes. Not just for his, uh, his message in his movies, but also for his, uh, for his uh, philosophy. Besides that, I guess the, the greatest hero in my life would be my wife. <laughs> it's, uh, and I think that's uh, the, the truth. The final question, actually it's not a question. Um, with this talk show, it was kind of an excuse I found out to, find, to meet people that I really liked. Mm -hmm. So I don't want only to question them, I also want to be questioned by them. Okay. So I'd like you to make a question to me. Yeah. Uh, could you imagine going, going into politics? Uh, I've, thought, I've thought about it. A long time, but last year we had elections for president in yes. Brazil, mm -hmm. and I made as a joke like a fake party and a fake candidate mm -hmm. with fake proposals. And I used to think that one day I would do something like that to go into politics as mm -hmm. a performance. Yeah, but I think in Brazil it's very hard, people mm -hmm. still wouldn't take this, they think they need someone serious to be in politics. Yeah. And, and I don't know, I think in, in a way you have to play the game. Yeah. I don't believe in the institutions anymore. And I, I don't know if I would put so much effort to be a part of that institution that I really think it's not worthy. No. So and that's, a, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's a, uh, a sad fact it is and I I, I, I I get the same reaction also for example when I talk to, to young people in, in the United States and uh, you know and it's always you know it's they would say no I'm never going into politics it's just bullshit and it's too corrupt and it's too aggressive and violent and I, you know, I would never go in there. And, uh, and then in smaller places, uh, uh, people, you know, like here in Iceland, you know, like, yeah, somebody like me, you know, run for mayor. And it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, doesn't matter in the big picture because it's so small. 
But I think uh, my story has proved the opposite because it, it matters. And so, you know, I would, you know, I would uh, tell people who, you know, want to uh, be political uh, to think small <laughs> and not big, you know, and, and uh, go into, you know, go into some neighborhood position and maybe city politics uh, and uh, but you know I don't know it's and uh, you know I don't think I would you know I, I, I don't think I would dare to run for mayor of Rio you know? <laughs> <laughs> I would help you with that if you would like to <laughs>